Osu Laser is the next major update to Osu, and it is incredible what the devs have done, improving upon existing systems, adding brand new features to the game. I, I love it. It seriously is the future of the game. If you're not as familiar, I definitely recommend watching Osu official YouTube channel's video about what is Laser. But for those who are already more informed, you might already know that you can download and play on Laser and even submit scores, kind of, right now. Which there actually is a big sizable chunk of the player base that has actually switched to Laser and that is their primary client. They don't touch stable at all anymore. So the question naturally arises, hey Willie, when are you going to switch to Laser? And the answer is honestly, I want to switch to Laser as soon as possible, but there's just some things keeping me from doing it just yet. It's either features that are planned to be implemented, but just haven't yet, uh, some issues I might have, you know, a little bit of both. So I just wanted to air that out on this video and hopefully, you know, maybe expedite the process on some of those things or even bring attention to issues that people didn't know were issues. Now, this comes with some caveats. I'm a very specific type of player. I only play standard. I don't play any of the other game modes. I'm pretty competitive when it comes to PP, uh, the score ranking, leaderboard farming which is very niche subsets of the game. And probably biggest of all, I am a very old player. I've been around for 10 years. I'm actually celebrating my 11 years in two more weeks. So I might have some stubborn opinions, but we'll get to those when we get to those. So what better way to illustrate what I think is missing in Osu Laser right now than to show you Osu Laser? And of course it goes without saying, Laser's being constantly updated. So there might be things that I mentioned in this video that are actually solved in the coming weeks. I'm going to skip talking about, you know, performance issues because those are obviously going to be fixed in the future with different optimization updates. And the UI, the UI is always being iterated upon and in fact there's already a new UI design that they're going to be implementing in the, the coming months or something. So I just want to talk about mods first because I have a lot of different opinions. First of all, for anyone who hasn't seen this before, there's a lot of them. Oh my god. In fact, I would say too many. I think that there are a few mods here that have effectively the same function that could be combined into a single mod instead of them being separate mods, if that makes sense at all. Primarily my issue is with a lot of the fun section mods. So let me explain. There is a new mod in Laser called Approach Different. And this is a mod that changes, you know, the reading of it because it changes how the approach circles close in on the circle. It has different, you know, effects that it can use and you can change the size of them. But it seems like there's also a few other mods that affect reading in the same way, even if it's technically not approach circles. There's a mod like Grow where the circles sort of whoop in before you have to click them. And of course, it's opposite deflate, where it goes until you have to click them. But I would argue those are approaching different, even if they don't have approach circles. And there's even some more I would probably add to this, but I'll leave it at that. Even just with that example, these are three mods that could just be condensed down to one now because Laser has customization settings for mods. What's stopping them from adding grow and deflate as a different style of approaching? Now, of course, you could also bring this back to legacy mods, which I know people would hate to see go away, but they're not really going away if you were to turn something like Nightcore just into a customization setting for double time. I don't think people would mind that that much. There's some other stuff, like Accuracy Challenge just seems like a more flexible version of Sudden Death or Perfect. So I wonder if these three mods might be able to combine into one. Just start thinking in that sort of idea, where there's mods that have overlapping responsibilities that technically could just be doing the same thing as a more broad concept mod. The more mods that there are, the more cluttered it just sort of feels, and there's just there's so much to keep track of. Another thing about the customization settings, just real quick, like they've tried to make it more obvious. Pretty much every single new laser player I show the game to they don't know that customization is a thing. <laughs> so I don't know how to change that or make it more obvious, but that's just a note. So that's a little softball one. Let's bring in a hardball issue for me. Difficulty Adjust is a mod which is incredible. It is great. You can change the circle size, the HP drain, the OD or the AR of, of any beat map. And this is honestly one of the best additions to the game. Instead of making a ton of different practice diffs or, you know, editing a beatmap, you can literally just play it from a mod. It makes it so easy. My issue is, this should not be ranked. I'm okay with pretty much every other mod getting ranked, as long as difficulty adjust does not. This will break the game in ways that we cannot even fathom yet. 
not even just thinking about the PP system, but thinking about leaderboards. If I change this to AR10, it doesn't actually make the map harder, it makes it easier. But how does the mod know that and how to adjust you on the leaderboard? Or even the PP system? Granted, reading PP could probably be implemented in the future. It also just opens up a can of worms where, let's say, you know, I, I FC a map with the normal stats and I want more PP. Okay, here's what I can do. There we go. Perfect. More PP. The CS is higher. There we go. More PP. The OD is higher. Like, sure, technically that makes it a harder map, but in effect, it's really not. Maybe that's just an issue I have with the decimals being too precise already, but I don't know, man. I think there's too many abuse cases, there's just no reason to have difficulty just ranked. I could go on and on, but I'll just leave it at that. Um, apart from that, talking about leaderboards, um, there's a pretty big issue with a pretty simple fix, and that's that the mod multipliers are all messed up in laser, and that's actually going back to an old laser update when they were trying to adjust mod multipliers for rate change maps with DT. The adverse effect is now base double time in laser is 1.10 times multiplier, when on stable it's 1.12. And this makes some interesting cases, don't pay attention to the laser scores, where Emrek is technically number one on United with hidden double time, but he's only a couple thousand behind a hidden hard rock SS. If he didn't get 99% on this, he wouldn't be number one. And that's entirely due to the DT multiplier being lowered. Now honestly, I see a simple fix to this, and that's just to lower the hidden multiplier, maybe have it or something like that. I think it would honestly make things a lot more fair. <laughs> Since a lot of people already think that hidden is, you know, quote unquote, a preference mod anyway, and that hidden being equal to hard rock, you know, for this entire time has been a huge mistake. I think that's probably the easiest fix. I do also want to point out, I have an issue with classic mod, which is, honestly, the multiplier is just a bit harsh. Even if you just turn that up by like 0 0.01, I think it would be a bit more fair. <laughs> Especially since there's so many existing stable scores. And it just feels so easy to snipe some of the best scores in the game. Like we see right here, a hidden double time FC with classic being sniped by a hidden hard rock FC just in laser. It just doesn't quite feel fair. But I don't know, maybe the hidden change paired with the classic mod multiplier change would fix that. Now I do want to keep talking a little bit about classic mod because this is one of my like things that will ultimately keep me from playing laser for a while. They're introducing mods to be considered for ranked on laser slowly, but classic is not one of those because there's a bug right now in the game with sliders when classic mod is on. And I hope that that gets fixed because I don't want to play on laser if it doesn't have the option of classic mod being ranked. Call me stubborn, but I am also a completionist in this game, and I have over 30,000 classic tagged scores now. So if I want to keep completing the game using classic mod, well, I need that to be ranked. I just want the option to be able to play with classic for ranked, you know, on laser, where that's just not an option at all right now. Another mod that should be ranked is Mirror, because I feel like that should be the easiest one to just consider for ranked. It really doesn't change anything about the map in a way to break it. It's just reflecting upon, you know, different axes. I I think that mirrors should just be ranked right now. Now, of course, one thing that Laser does improve over current stable gameplay is that note lock is different. But I've actually encountered a few issues with the Laser note lock. And this honestly might just be me complaining because I'm bad. But I don't know. I I feel like I'm I'm a little good at the game. The note lock seems to be too loose at times, which sounds weird because, you know, everyone on stable complains that it's too harsh, and I'm saying the opposite on laser. But it's only with patterns where the notes are stacked and I might be accidentally over tapping, which I know sounds like an issue, just tap correctly, but it feels like I'm able to hit notes stacked under a slider way far in the future and miss them like before I even realize that there's a note there. You know what I'm saying? I don't really have a great way of explaining it. Now here might be an example. You can see that this is a double into this, right? But there's a slight overlap with the next double that happens. Like, what is that? Pretty much a 1-1 one, one beat away. And I feel like there's circumstances where I've been aiming here on the overlap between them and I've over tapped the double. Maybe I've tapped it as if it were a triple or something and I'll miss the first note of this, even though I don't even realize I'm clicking on it yet. 
Does that make sense? Now, I think that the solution to this could be making note lock variable based on like the density of notes around it. Because the issues that people have with note lock are primarily very fast jump patterns and space streams where it's notes happening rapidly where you would want a looser note lock so you could hit them in case you do miss on those patterns. But right here, there's not really notes happening for like this entire one one beat. So maybe you could make note lock a lot more strict or at least in the sense that you can't hit notes out of order. So maybe it would wiggle this note first instead. Y you know what I'm saying? Dude, look at all these scores from BMAP spotlights in the daily challenge. By the way, by the way, here's a laser suggestion. Bring back BMAP spotlights. Now that I'm on my profile, I do want to mention profile stats updating is very confusing. Right now, there are two concurrent environments running. There's the stable environment with the stable database of scores, and there's the laser environment that has the laser database of scores. But both of these environments will update your profile stats. So right now, it's kind of like a weird mix mash of the two. Like, I don't know actually how much rank score I have because some of my rank score is using laser classic scoring and some of my score is using stable OSU scoring. And also probably the bigger, easier to see example is I actually don't know how many S ranks I have because laser counts S ranks differently. It's any score with zero misses that is above 95% accuracy compared to stables, which is zero misses where the ratios align usually above like 93% accuracy. Meaning I have some stable S ranks in here that would be turned into A ranks if they were counting using the laser numbers and some stable A ranks that would be turned into laser S ranks if they were using the laser numbers. But because this is both using stable numbers to increment and laser numbers to increment, I actually don't know how many S ranks I have. The solution is obviously to just start using one of the environments, you know, the laser environment instead, and recalculate all the rank score and all the S ranks for everyone, which is a huge process, I know. And the reason why there's two separate environments right now is for testing, because laser is effectively still testing things. But that's also my other complaint, is laser scores right now, although they technically count, they really don't count. Look, there's laser scores on this leaderboard. But if you're on the OSU website, it won't show you that unless you have the laser scores checked. So to most of the player base, at least currently, it's as if they don't exist. To try and elaborate more on this disconnect between what you see in laser and what is presented to the players elsewhere, you can see that right here, Vince7778 got a number one on this beatmap in laser 12 days ago. But if you were to check his profile under the sections where it lists his first place ranks, it's not there at all. Because the laser environment isn't the definitive environment that we switched to yet, there's going to be this disconnect between what players perceive as actually, for lack of a better term, real, and what is actually technically counting towards ranked in this game in a competitive sense. It's a change that will take a lot of time and effort, especially on the dev end, but it's one that I as a competitive player would want to see to say, oh, Laser does have this competitive integrity and I can trust the leaderboards of what I'm seeing and the stats on my profile before I would want to switch over. Another thing to note is that they've said they're going to implement more, you know, skinning editor changes in the future, but at least as it stands right now, you can't really change elements of skins. If I wanted to change out the cursor or hit circle on this, I can't do it right now. Effectively, you have to make a, a skin on stable and then just import it to laser and delete your old skin if you were want to change it in this current state. But of course, like I said, that's already being changed. Peppy's working on that. Another thing I really do like is in game, you can see when DT is customized, it shows you the rate in this sort of like, I don't know, hexagon view right here, added onto it. But if you were to check on the website and I am indeed using laser mode right now, so you can see the laser scoring, it just shows a DT icon and it's only on hover that you get to see the rate. So I wish there were an easier way to see these mod settings, maybe do a little magic and make that icon a little wider to show the 1.3 like that. I don't know, I don't know. And I think that's pretty much my major issues with laser. Um, if those were fixed up, I would definitely use laser as my main client. I mean, I, I still play laser every day because I love the daily challenge, but I just hop off and go back on to stable as soon as that's over. I, I would definitely switch over to laser as soon as those are fixed up. So were some of those reasonable? Were some of them me being stubborn, like I mentioned before? I don't know. You can decide for yourself. Those are just the things that are important to me personally.
I'd be curious to see what you guys think might be missing from the game. I'm sure a lot of people are going to bring up, oh, ranking DT rates or, you know, doing this or that. But, I mean, th they just didn't really matter too much to me. <laughs> but if they matter to you, comment below. I think that's that's all for this week. So see you guys later.